Imagine a work of art that could turn a horrible tragedy into a cause for celebration. That's just what the world's first child abuse monument is designed to do. The memorial features the work of hundreds of Canadian child abuse survivors on the outside as well as in the hollow inside. It's an ambitious undertaking, but one that is making a huge impact. who created this has never done sculpting before, but they made their handprint and then they made this. It's extraordinary. Uh, can you see the child in the palm of the hand? He's a non-artist. Mm -hmm. This is amazing work. Power of good art comes from deep core uh, of the self, and child abuse is inseparable from the core. So the place that good art comes from is connected to that place that was also was hurt. And then the idea of a, of a national monument that's going to have an impact on, really on the world is very inspirational and is very, you know, it draws people's passion. So the necessities of good art exist right. in these squares. And so the people come up with the content and then I have a studio staff of good artists who also know about child abuse issues and they help the person finish off. When you see the squares, they're all good professional works of art. Now let me show you. Come up from there and just go straight down. We were looking at ways to involve other people in the community, and and we had some kids in, and they drew some hands. Quite quickly, the poignant and powerful words that the children were saying were important to have. So we've gone into school classrooms, and the kids' hands are are totally amazing. Michael Irving said to the kids, "Let's talk about how we feel." with the hope that maybe in the future when kids read this they'll say physical abuse what is that children were abused at some point and so it was kind of interesting for the kids to actually look to the future and say we can make a change here physical injuries last a long time but emotional injuries last longer my father was abused and i wasn't and that the cycle stopped and in this family line it will never start again i think say stop child abuse and I think that's gonna take a while but I hope it's gonna happen soon because it's a horrible thing. You woke in the morning in a cold creaky dawn and you search for your shoes did they run out with scorn You rose to the day With your hunger and pain And you toiled in someone's field Through the aches and the pain The screams and the shouts Of your minders devout Like a splinter black tom Left no lingering doubt as to why you were here And why the middle of the night Was fraught with nightmares For some real as life You waited for the shoes But they never came by Did an army of feet Steal them away in the night but hush now, they've appeared on the Parliament's race As a vote of no confidence coincidentally failed It's a long time ago, and for some it is past Can you ever forgive the tag of outcasts? To cherish all of the children of the nation equally Was the forgotten principle of 1916 You waited for a while to watch the display Of a parade of balloons that broke ranks in the air and in them you saw images of long lost friends 
as they floated off together in the childhood game. And you waited for the shoes, but they never came by. Did an army of feet steal them away in the night? But hush now, they appear on the Parliament's rails. As a hold of no confidence, coincidentally failed. With eyes to the ground, you slipped out of town. Another cancellation, another waste of time. The importance of a foregone conclusion in the state is more important than the dignity of the shunned electorate. And you waited for the shoes. But they never came by. Did an army of feet steal them away in the night? But hush now, they've appeared on the Parliament's rails with the black and white wreaths placed there by your friends. But hush now, they've appeared. On the Parliament's rails, with the black and white wreaths placed there by your friends. Eleven-year-old Christopher Stevenson was abducted and murdered in June 1988. His story lives on, and one man is making sure children like Christopher are remembered. Dr. Michael Irving is a child abuse survivor and the creator of this artistic masterpiece. This monument is a voice for all children who have been abused. It was in front of the Vietnam War Memorial in 1990 that I decided that I would build a, a memorial to survivors of child abuse, a memorial that would have the kind of impact on society that the Vietnam Wall did to change an issue that was very much like child abuse, an issue with distancing, denial. And the memorial is two 10-foot by 30-foot sculptures. One sculpture sits in the middle of Dr. Irving's driveway at his home in Toronto. Every square has a handprint. Every handprint has a story. And every story belongs to a child abuse victim. Megan, age 11, wrote for Nicole, her friend, the bravest people in the world is not Superman or Spider-Man. It's the people that are abused and live to help others like them. This is the hand of Martin Cruz, the first of 35 men to come forward with their experience of sexual abuse at Toronto's Maple Leaf Gardens. He committed suicide. And the family contacted me a couple of days after his suicide and said that Martin wanted to be part of the monument and could, was there a way I could do that. So I went to the funeral home with his two brothers and we actually made a cast of his hand right in the casket. And they say it you know, was one of the most powerful experiences of their life. And part of the tragedy of Martin, which is, is the same tragedy on some of the other squares, is that it was a, a secret, it was silent. No one knew about it. Child abuse is a tragedy for those who go through the abuse, and then it's a tragedy for those who have to live with it. You know, the survivor suffers in so many ways, and you have half a life and half a family and half a marriage um, after being abused, and there's a lot of pieces to put back together. Child abuse paralyzed me. It paralyzed me with shame. It paralyzed me with guilt. It paralyzed me with fear. Um, at 35 years old, I had about a, a, a fifth, sixth grade uh, writing level. Uh, I did a lot of therapy, and, and, I, and I got a good relationship that nurtured me as an adult, and I recreated a positive family. It is possible to heal from child abuse, and it's possible to move on. Um, I went from being paralyzed um, with, with speaking, I was paralyzed with writing, to being able to do a, a, a thousand page doc, writing books and publishing in, in psychology journals, uh, exhibiting art uh, internationally, and I've got a, a, a wonderful life, 
and it's possible to have a wonderful life after abuse, but it is a lot of work. It doesn't come easy. What impresses me is in, in, in all my time in this field, I've never seen anyone create something that gives the feeling of, of noble and of proud and of courage and of beauty and strength that is portrayed in these figures. And everybody who's been through that, who's survived, has all of those. And nowhere is it honored in that way, the survivors. This is mm -hmm. unique in that sense. Yeah. The monument is collaborative. It took almost six years to come up with the final design. And that design, the emotion and the spirit behind that design was influenced by literally hundreds of people that I talked to about what should a monument do. And the design was created more from the feeling than the actual image of the figure. So I worked with the feeling and I, and I felt what the monument would feel like if you walked around it. And I spent 45 minutes just outside walking around this building. And then I walked in to my studio and, and the monument came together in about 45 minutes. But it took six years to get to that 45 minutes and literally the input of several hundred people about what it should be and what it should do. I worked for 24 years building the first national monument to survivors of child abuse. Today we are moving it up to York Region for a fundraiser. It's been a, a long journey trying to get the monument placed. It's very hard for people to step forward and get treatment for child abuse. There's such a social stigma and social shame about being abused as a child. To have a national monument that's in a prominent public location in some ways helps to normalize the issue. Not to normalize it that it's a normal thing to do, but to normalize it so that it's something that we can talk about, it's something that we can share and we can think about. In part the monument is going to stand there as a voice for all the survivors and all of the children that can't necessarily stand in front of the audience and talk about their abuse history. My name is Tim Byrne. I'm the uh, owner operator of Stadia Door and Glass. Uh, we were contacted and asked if we would participate to help move this sculpture. I just said yes. You, you realize that these children don't know how to tell people and uh, can't stop it unless they are hurt. This is just the most phenomenal touchstone for individuals who have experienced the importance of having this monument in place that is accessible. will give them a place to, to come and to actually bear witness and to, to hear that call to action. The night before, I lost sleep. They're moving a million dollar monument that's four and a half thousand pounds. I don't want to move that monument again. Before people go into the event, they will hear the stories that have been put on the monument. They will be touched by the monument and the plan is get the monument placed. Unless you find a home for his monument, the journey's not done. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to introduce you and to tell you a little bit about the artist and Dr. Michael Irving. Thank you. I hope the next time we're filming this, that I can tell you that we're placing that in a perfect place. Although we want to forget, it must not be forgotten. So we build a monument high, hands embellished with our lines of misery and the despair of hope and pain and love and care and invite everyone like me and reach out to humanity and we'll rise to forget to regret to remember your life was 
a wreck, you ask why? Oh, why? Will you ever, will you never lose your steely frown and deliver a smile? Although we want to forget, it must not be forgotten. So we build a monument high, hands embellished with our lies of misery and despair, of hope and pain and love and care. And Once you find a home for his monument, the journey's not done. I hope the next time we're filming this, that I can tell you that we're placing that in the perfect place. Although we want to forget, it must not be forgotten. So we build a monument high, hands embellished with our lives of misery. And despair of hope and pain and love and care And invite everyone like me And reach out to humanity And we'll strive